Oh, 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 freak. Or for the... Look, you see? Too much leadership. What is up, guys? And welcome to the Beyond Sanity. My name is Shanks. And today, we're gonna cast yet another replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06. It's a 2v2 replay, but... This one is a bit more special. And I will explain you guys in a bit why. At the bottom right, you have the orange model player Axelos. His ally top right is the blue Isengard player Unicorn. So Isengard model combination. They're against the green Mordor player Ganjaman. And his ally, and that's the special part, is the red Rohan player Shanks. That's me. That's a replay from 2018. I was able to find a folder on my PC which contains a couple of uh, replays from back in the day. And I don't normally save replays that often, so it has to be a good replay, but I don't remember this game anymore. I don't know how it went. I don't know how I was, pl how I was playing. Hopefully, it's going to be a good game. So, at the beginning, Mordor gets three settlements outside. So, he can get the wood bonus to 20%, which means cheaper buildings inside the castle. And I am pushing forward to hurt the economy from the Mordor player. So if you have to make a choice between focusing down Isengard or Mordor, I would recommend you to focus down Mordor instead, because Mordor opening almost every single time before Orc Pit and Gollum, you know, and then he has no money left uh, buying anything inside the castle after getting those two settlements under his control. Which means if he can destroy even one of them, it will kind of slow down the Mordor progressing in the game quite a lot. And my ally with three settlements outside will grow rich incredibly fast. They get one more peasant. Back in the day, I was not a big fan of the peasant spam. I was actually more like a fan of getting stable on the field a bit faster. Nowadays, in 2022, when I play Rohan, I like to spam a lot of peasants, which is still much, much better in my opinion. I just was too lazy back in the day. And believe it or not, I've improved in this game. You know, I am nowadays better than I was back in 2018, even though I was younger. So, age is only a number. My Hobbit should be... Little bit careful here, trying to, def you know, defeat those Uruks. My ally has second Orpid coming up. That's very important when you play Mordor with a good faction ally, like Gondor or Rohan, against two evil factions, you want to spam Orcs non-stop. Because Orcs can be disturbing, annoying, and they can also be countering the enemy pikemen later on. Okay, this one is going to be taken down too. Mordor's eco is not looking too good, and my ally's eco will look much, much greater in a bit. because he recaptured every single one of these mills. So he will be in a good spot. We have the first Rohirrim on the way. Um, the problem in this matchup for the Rohan faction player, in this case for me, is that you will be the poorest member out of all four players in this game. Uh, Loki, you are kind of broke. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, because you have only one single settlement outside. And remember, Rohan is the one faction with only seven available spots inside the castle. That means, for example, Isengard, Mordor have eight, and Gondor has even nine. And with one thing, uh, I can't even talk. With one single settlement outside, you will be kind of broke. And this Isengard went for Lourdes, which in my opinion is a mistake. You don't need Lourdes in this matchup. Um, because Mordor will provide you so much additional leadership anyway that you don't really need the leadership from Lourdes. But it's not a bad thing, you know, because Lourdes can be a great counter to the Rohirrim early game. Rohirrim, in compared to the Gondor Knights, are much more vulnerable against arrow damage from heroes. So, for example, Lourdes can legit two-shot my Rohirrim, but to kill a Gondor Knight, he needs like four shots. Uh, they have the same HP, but Rohirrim have like a different armor set. Okay? I mean, I'm not allowing this Mordor to build up any Lumber Mill so he doesn't get any wood bonus because one mill is not enough to get the wood bonus. You need it bare minimum two to get the 10% discount. Looks like I will try to creep. Look this micro, dude. <laughs> okay, with the Eye of Sauron. And the troll is following me, but I need to be careful. I'm also being hunted by a Vork behind me. Um, you know, getting the money from the creep is very important for me at this point because I will need the money desperately. So the troll is going to permit chase us, but it's okay. We can just run into the allies base and the troll should be getting killed by the towers. And also Mordor player, my ally, will get a little bit more power points, which is very really important. He also captured the middle camp in the middle, in the center of the map Anorian. Lourdes, level 3, has Carnage unlocked. And the creep top is still remaining on the field. Mordor will be able now to build the troll cage. But look my ally's bees. He has a full bees with resource buildings beside those two orc pits. And then he has now a middle camp too. Which he will be easily able to protect. Maybe not. Lourdes is coming in clutch. 
He has Carnage, remember? That's gonna be a huge damage boost. He's gonna use it. Uh oh. The towers, can they make it up? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, every single one of them made it up. It means there is no way that Mordor can destroy this camp. Just too many towers, you know? <laughs> Just too powerful. Okay, in the meantime, I have an armory up on the field. Um, no money for any upgrades yet. Again, with one single farm outside, it's tough. But it's okay, because with the three mills outside, in the middle camp, under his control, my ally will actually be super rich. He will be the richest member in this game, and eventually be able to recruit something like a Nazgul or a Witch King super early, which is going to be quite helpful when it comes to rush the beast with my Rohirrim, because remember we are against Mordor and Isengard. So Mordor will have trolls to defend himself, which are a great counter, one of the best counters to the horses, and the Isengard play will have pikemen to counter my horses. But with the Witch King leadership and Witch King being able to kill those trolls, kill those pikes, it will me it will make my life much much easier to rush the pieces. I'm microing around, luring the troll to the middle camp and then trying to creep this. Let's see if he can get the last hit here. Lourdes eventually might be able to steal it. He's gonna draw the sword. Oh, he wa he was going for it, but no, 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 oh no no no, he doesn't get the money either. <laughs> get outplayed, son. I mean, I was a beast, even, dude, I was even a beast back in the day, 2018. I'm playing good, actually. And we have now two power point situation for the mortal player, for my friend uh, Ganjaman. He has industry, and boo. This is looking beautiful, by the way. Look at this. They're, these are five, uh, six furnaces, but they are acting like it would be 12 furnaces, because every single one of them gives you double the money now, as we are talking, you know? That's a huge... Huge, huge thing. Heavy armor purchase. He's gonna use even War Chant on the Pikeman, but I'm not planning to fight the Pikeman anyway. I will just disengage, no problem. My ally was using I, but I cannot fight this. There is no world in which I can fight this. You know what I mean? Against War Chanted Pikeman? That's not possible. Okay, so we have the uh, Blade purchased and the Heavy Armor purchase. I'm pretty sure I'm trying to also go for the Banner Carry upgrade because Banner is very important in the patch 1.06 against Mordor. Um, otherwise, the Nazgul can screw your Rohirrim big time. And the good thing about Rohirrim, despite being the fact that we get countered hardcore from every single location, is the mobility. So we can actually hit and run, and the enemy cannot catch us soon. So the trolls, they are fast, yes, but they cannot keep up with the speed of the Rohirrim. That's not possible. I mean, at this point of the game, I'm trying to just buy time for my ally uh, Mordor. Who has now, I believe, uh, yeah, Witch King on the way. And he will also... Okay, he's now giving up this two mills for me. That's very good. And uh, that's going to be quite helpful for me to get a bit more money. Um, I still couldn't demolish that. Okay, because I was waiting for the money. That's a mistake, by the way. <laughs> now I would do that a bit different. I would just purchase old upgrades first and then demolish it right off the bat. Just to be a bit more time efficient. Because this is blocking a full spot out of seven spots in my castle and I don't get any money and any value from it so I would just kept purchase everything before upgrading my units with it and then demolish it ASAP but from mistakes we learn it's good though we have now three farms outside it's gonna be quite helpful to get a bit more money and recruiting Theorin would be a pointless situation for me because I know there is a lord who can eventually shut him down Theodin, super vulnerable hero super squishy hero he will eventually die in a second in Isengard, Mordor are preparing for a big push. Troll Kitch level 2, the first drama troll is on the way. So, that's the problem. In an all-out fight, you cannot win against this army. That's not possible. Three combos with trolls protecting them. Lourdes, almost level 5 for even more leadership. In drama troll, the best leadership giving unit in the entire game. Against my Rohirrim, my Rohirrim don't stand a chance. They will die before they can even get to the point in which they can trample. And trample would legit deal no damage. But here comes the beast rush. If three Rohirrim with Forge Blades and Heavy Armor, the Witch King from my ally is sporting big time. And I'm trying to I'm trying my best to kill the Uruk pit. To kind of cut down the pike, Pikeman production. And also the production speed of the Uruk pit. Remember a level 1 Uruk pit? Producing 50% slower in compared to a Uruk pit level 3. So, my goal is not to fight against trolls. Because I can't. I, my goal is not to fight against combos either. I'm trying to keep the opponent busy. And just focusing down the structures. Because that's what brings you the victory in this game you need to destroy every single structure and you don't have to kill every single unit now we need to peel back or not i think i'm gonna now move to the bottom location 
keep rushing all the time and that's the beautiful part about the situation that's what you need to do when you play with cavalry in 2022 in battle for middle earth one you need to use the power the, the the major power of this cavalry units is speed and you have the hit and run potential so we are rushing the one base the opponent is coming to defend with the one base and then we are just moving down to the second base destroying structure and buying our, ourselves and our ally much more time because he has now a siege works he will get more and more catapults to counter the uh, slow pikemen i mean slow combos from the isengard player the witch king needs to be careful okay look look the damage output that's what i'm talking about you know <laughs> he will also get level 10 in a, in a, in a second pretty much die he doesn't demolish yeah Lords almost level 5. Even catapults need like 10 shots to kill them. They are just too tanky. I have Sauron, combat experience, Lords level 5 for more greater leadership. And I know I cannot fight this, right? I, I know it's not possible for me to fight that. So I'm trying to rush the Isengard base and hope, kind of force them to make a choice. Because, you know, even if they de destroy the middle camp, it won't bring them the victory because my ally has still a castle, which they need to get, get through. You know what I mean? But if Isengard losing the main castle, he will be defeated no matter what. If also Tyrion on the field now, um, but I need to make sure to dodge, you know, Lourdes all the time. But Tyrion even giving more leadership, that means our Rohirrim, as we are talking, we have 100% damage, 100% armor with the Witch King around them. And there are no pikemen. So in the meantime, the middle camp is going to be fully destroyed. Yes, fully destroyed. My ally actually doesn't have a second uh, Siege works. He is going for the Nazgul, but trolls, they don't stand a chance against as many combos too. 4 power points in the bank. Mortal player Axilos has 3 power points in the bank after the industry. And Unicorn, the Isengard player, has 5 power points in the bank after the industry too. So he will go straight um, to the Freezing Rain, which is going to shut down the effects of Tearing King, of, you know, Witch King, and all the other leadership bonuses we get from Mordor. So basically, Freezing Rain hard counters the Mordor's existence. But the problem here is for Unicorn, he is trying to go directly to the to the Freezing Rain. That means he has no land to cover the double land. So as we as you can see, we have a land from Mordor, from my ally, and I also do have a land. So what will happen eventually is uh, somebody is going to use a land. We can cover this land after it gets covered by the opponent player and we have two lands against one so we will always win the land fight and land is working like a freezing rain on our land the enemy does have no leadership uh oh oh <laughs> they are committing now look the tower look you see <laughs> level seven uh oh okay big fight big fiesta pro here i'm trying to charge in free Oh, but Lucy, the land advantage is massive. On our land, they have no leadership available. It means all the bonuses they get from the from the drummer throw, from Lords, from Warchan, from Eye of Sauron, they don't mean anything anymore. And he needs to move aside. So the trolls, I don't know what the trolls are doing, but the orange trolls were able to win. However, as there are no more archers left on the field, our Witch King from our ally and the Nazgul can easily take care of these trolls, no problemo. Yeah, he went for the Freezing Rain. And the problem here is, if you choose to go for the Tainted Land, what will happen is, if the opponent player, for example, you are playing Isengard, you are placing a Tainted Land and you use Rain afterwards, all the opponent has to do from you is to step on your land and then leave the land afterwards to get to regain all the bonuses. So your land is a handicap for your Freezing Rain. Okay, boys, Lords. Okay, Lords running for his life. Carnage. I mean, as you can see, we are not glowing. We have no leadership available. But it's the level of my Tyrion. He's almost level 4. I used heal because I want to actually go now to the Mordor Beast. Mordor Beast, this Mordor has no money for the Witch King because he needs to keep recruiting trolls and, you know, drummer trolls all the time. They cost a lot of money. And remember, this mortar is only one single settlement because he gives this one to his ally. So he's kind of poor and broke. And unlike my mortar or my ally, you know, he has a Nazgul, a Witch King, Trolls, Drummer Trolls, Catapults, Middle Camp, Recaptured for the second time. So he's pretty, pretty strong. If also Eowyn chilling in the Middle Camp, I forgot about her. <laughs> She's trying to cook. 
Oh oh, we have Glorious Charge Situation, boys. Theodin level 4. Right now, right for ruin in the world's ending. Am I gonna use it? We have also the shields, the horseman shields, for more durability against arrows. But again, even with all of that, I cannot really fight this because the freezing rain is still active and our leadership bonuses are not active on our Rohirrim. I mean, he has two combos um, with Lourdes. Drummer Troll is coming. Drummer Troll cannot be that fast. They have no money to get Saruman on the field and we need catapults. Catapults are kind of lame, but they are required, you know, because what can you do against this str strength and power from Isengard Mortal Combination? And then, with the freezing rain, they shut you down. Okay, now we make the transition with Aragorn on the field. Anduril Sword too. Super tanky dude, but even Aragorn would get literally one-shotted. Literally. Okay. Because Lourdes can cripple him, and then this combos can one-shot him. The Witch King, Nazgul, he might go for the for next Nazgul. Nah, he doesn't have money for it, because he gave those two farms to us. That's why we are able to get a lot of stuff on the field. And we have four Rohirrim, and a couple of them are also highly leveled. One of them is being level 5, the other one is being level 7. And we have Glorious Charge with Witch King, Theodian Leadership, eventually I. So it's a very strong Rohirrim army. Big push, but again, hard counter situation from the trolls and pikemen combination. So I cannot trample into the pikemen in the porcupine formation. That's, you know, you can, of course, but you wouldn't survive that. It's just too powerful. Oh, 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 the land wombo combo. And that's the one, one wombo combo you need to understand what is happening here. Because as we are trampling them, we are using land before the trample begins. So it. The mo at the moment of trample the enemy losing all the bonuses so what happens as you can see the pikemen they are immune to be trampled they cannot be knocked down on the ground from your from our horses but what we can do is we can kill the backline for example this combo right here has zero arch i mean has one archer left you need you see what i mean and the archer is required to deal damage because our combo is a range unit and he, you can't go in the melee range and attack with the pikemen the pikemen are only there for protection for tanking the damage from horses for example right and for that reason even though the combos were able to survive they are kind of being completely useless what is saruman doing eowyn smite him look i mean my ally is losing those catapults unfortunately but it's fine this mordo needs a witch king very very soon um, we have three combos, but one of them is being completely useless. Actually, two of them are being completely useless. Um, Saruman was able to survive with one, one HP. We are waiting for the Glorious Charge. It's available now. We are, you know, looking for the momentum, looking for opportunity. Eowyn was able to survive, actually. Um, she could have just used Smite, but she's dismounted with Aragorn. That's all she wanted. All the dream from Eowyn in the, you know, Return of the King to, was to be with Aragorn. Okay, we are trampling, which is kind of risky. He's going to use the Wizard Blast. I don't even see Saruman. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. There are just too many glowing units on the field. It's so disturbing. Aragorn is diving in. We have also combos now. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about them. We have also combos with Theorian leadership, Witch King, Aragorn giving them buff. Also, Eowyn got just one shotted. Level ten, you know, combos. If they choose to shoot my Aragorn, they would die in a second. I mean, Aragorn would die in a second, but they don't get the chance to shoot because there are not ma many archers left on the field anymore. Lords and Saruman have been taken down. The power points are rising to the sky. Mordor has 12 power points after the darkness. He's only 8 power points away from getting the Balrog unlocked. Um, Axelos, this Mordor player at the bottom right, has just gotten the darkness and has one power point on top of that. Our Aragorn is chasing and hunting this level 10 combos like a madman. Aragorn, the one-man army he is. Very, very strong. Even trolls don't stand a chance against him. And Atelas, boom, 50% HP regeneration, just like that, you know? And Unicorn has 11 power points after the Freezing Rain. And we have actually 7 power points after the land. So we can go for the, for the Cloud Break or for the... Look, you see? Too much leadership. Level 10 instantly. You saw that, guys? Level 10. Level 9. Aragorn giving 100%. And Aragorn got level 10 too? H how? 
the sharing experience momentum. Aragorn got instantly level 2. I think what happened is we killed Lourdes on the on the spot. Aragorn was too close to the combos and he just insta got level 10. In Dead's Children is the main reason why we nerfed the combat experience in the patch 2.22. I used to love 1.06 version, okay? I played eventually thousands of games on this patch. Th tens of thousands, as Saruman would like to say. But there were some serious problems in this version. As for example, this one. Like, there are two major heroes which can, you know get from level 5 to level 10 in a, in a single in a blinking of an eye and then those heroes can single-handedly win you the game and one of them is being aragon as you can see there is no counterplay if aragon gets to level 10 you're you are playing isengard you have infantry slow moving units you cannot dodge the aod and aod regardless how much leadership you have it are immune they don't die to your arrows they don't die to buildings they don't die to nazgus which king units or heroes and they will just one-shot everything you have. And that's a game-winning situation right there. Just put your unit, uh, put your hero next to the unit. With combat experience like crazy, think about it. We have Eye of Sauron for 100%. Drama Troll for 200%. And Aragorn himself for another 100%. That's 400% combat experience, you know? And then, boom, one kill on a tower, on a unit, on a hero. And boom, you are from level 5 or from level 6 everywhere. All the way to level 10. GG well played. It was a good game actually. Uh, I was playing pretty good. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. It's kind of. It feels kind of strange to cast your own replays. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially from 2018. You know. And now we are in 2022, and we are still doing BFME stuff. Hopefully, even in 2032, we will hopefully be able to do stuff for BFME 3. Who knows? There is always hope. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and as always, keep hitting like a truck and stay beyond standards. Peace out.